right, we're uh, going to introduce you to the Forbid Projects replacement um, filament feeder kit. What you've got there is you've got your machined back plate, your machined um, pinch arm, two springs, roller bearing, pin, four washers, two screws, one long one short, three nuts and then two attaching screws. Now then, that's the standard kit as it comes to you. Obviously on top of that you're going to need a servo from the MakerBot. We've actually got the grip reel uh, loose here. An 8mm spanner and three of the Allen keys from the MakerBot. Right, let's, we'll take you through the basic setting up and then we'll show you the variations in the way the system can work. Right, to start with, we recommend that what you do is you place your grip roller on and get the center, the center of that groove there, exactly 10 millimeters away from the back plate. The closer you can get that to 10 millimeters, the less trouble you'll have. And then tighten up a little. It, it should be there almost from the factory. And then again, don't go mad. These are only tiny little grub screws. They will only take so much and then they're done. So I'm double checking that that's 10 mil from the back and it's as near as I can get it with line of sight. Um, again, the idea being that that is exactly where you expect the hole to be on the MakerBot. Right, next we'll drop the backing plate on and use the 6mm screw and the second size up on key. Now then initially we only want to put that in and screw it to touch. We don't want to actually tighten this. We want that backing plate still to have a bit of movement so that when we place the arm on we can make sure that hole is uh, located properly. While we're at it we'll put the roller bearing in and on the pin you will notice a tiny little pip. The pip wants to go down. The idea being that if that centre pin is rubbing on the back, it's rubbing on that tiny pit with, with as little friction as possible. Because again we're trying to drop all the friction away from this so that that roller puts all its effort into um, sending the filament through. Okay so the way we tighten this now is tighten finger tight and then back a quarter of a turn. We should leave that loose but not sloppy. And then we'll go back and tighten up the original one Again, just finger tight. We aren't trying to tighten these uh, hard. If you strip the threads inside that servo, then you're going to have a right job on because it's very difficult to, uh, with the threads so small, to get them back. You end up trying to oversize them and it's a nightmare all day long. So, we've got the pinch roller there running quite nicely, the pinch arm. You can see where it drops. It's worthwhile just seeing, looking down yourself to see that that roller sits and it should now sit right in the middle of the serrations so that it's almost edge to edge on the serrations which means that that roller then is holding the filament as deep in that groove as it can keeping it central and the tendency to try and ride up the groove uh, is held to the minimum because of course it, the pressures are being held down with the um, arrangement here. Now then, this is where we get our variations and where we can get the different choices. If we take the long screw and place one of the nuts on it, this is the first variation. This allows you, if you want, to get a feeling of the tensions involved. I'm just going to tie that a bit further, it's just a little bit sloppy finger tie. And what that allows you to do there is you can actually control using that nut you actually control the distance there, that's almost touching as you can see by turning that nut and using the nut as a as a locking system you can adjust that so that if you want, and you don't want to use the springs you can use the longer screw and have uh, a fixed grip that is literally, you just set the tension up and then let it go that's option one. I don't consider it's a favourite. 
Uh, one of the things we're finding is that filament diameters, well, if you measure them with accurate equipment, they are varying yard to yard, which when you consider it's a plastic, it's an extruded plastic, to actually keep them accurate, um, it's just not in the nature of the manufacturer. At the end of the day, uh, it's not wire. Wire actually goes through a series of conforming dies. Uh, this stuff comes out of the machine. I don't even know if it goes through any conforming dies. I know that there is variance in the size. So what this system allows you to do is take advantage of the fact that uh, if you use a spring, now one of the ways that we can work is we can start by placing just the nut on, take that all the way down, and then all I like to do is I like to just nip that tight so it's not going anywhere with the spanner. Again, figure tight, we're not going mad. So what we've got there now is we've got a fixed arrangement on which we can put the springs. Now we can also add more screws, more nuts if we wanted to make the springs tighter or we could have washers at the back of the nut so that we're working in, in tiny little increments. So between the four washers and the extra nuts you can crush that spring right down as far as you want. Now what I find the easiest way to put these on is literally just to loosen off the, the lock. Now then, the larger spring is the softer of the two. If you get older of the two you'll be able to see the larger spring is the softer of the two. That's like you start off a 10, place that on there, drop the whole thing in, drop your screw in and tighten up. You obviously tighten that up. And that's like your version 1 level where you spring. It's nicely trapped, it isn't going anywhere because of that long shaft. Uh, and it, the spring actually works quite nicely. Fairly, fairly low level tension. Second option after that is to go for the small spring, which is uh, a much higher pressure, in fact as you can see it's fighting me already. So we'll get that in and try not to lose the pin out the back at the same time. Sometimes it's a three hand job. Now that is a much tighter, a much more pressure, much more pressure on that roller. Again, you've got to try this out and a lot of it is listen to the machine. If it's tick, 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 ticked, try press down and if the ticket goes away and the filament's still feeding, you're pressing too hard. If you if you hold it there and the filament's feeding, fine. You can then get hold of it and pull and see if adding pressure will help the filament go. So you can actually get a feel for it yourself, just in addition to the springs. You get an idea of whether you want more, less or less pressure. I've got to say, uh, we're finding that that arrangement with the uh, smaller spring is plenty of pressure. It is enough pressure to, uh, to run the system without uh, anything more. But, if you do want more pressure, and I've got to say, it all depends if you're using bigger servos. Uh, there are servos out there, oh, this won't let go, there are servos out there that drive harder and you want to, you can add more pressure. The way this system can work is those two springs will go inside each other, so you can use a double spring arrangement. And, in addition to that, you can add more nuts down there to squash the spring down or you can work in washers which each washer is a millimetre thick and move down in millimetres so you can slowly step by step between the two springs the screws and the washers alter the pressure on that roller until it's absolutely perfect for whatever you're using and then finally the last thing we recommend which we'll put this back together which you don't have to use uh, one of the nuts provided, particularly if you've used them all up. You've used them all up, I've got to say. The amount of pressure you're putting on your ro uh, your roller is way above anything we've ever needed. Uh, what we've found is, like I say, the 8mm is ample. Ooh, 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 fighting there. Oh, oh. But because it's on camera, it wants to, it wants to upstage me. Well, we'll put it in bit by bit. What we'll do is we'll get that in there. Then we'll put a pin in, which I've just put in upside down, never mind. For the sake of the demonstration, I need to move on. So having got our 8mm pin in there and 
like I said, down and just back enough so that it, you can feel it moving quite nicely. One of the things we do recommend, if you're still using the standard pipe to feed in, the, the plastic pipe, we're finding that occasionally it locks down and traps itself in the standard uh, arrangement. So we've ended up not putting a cup on there. What we recommend is just put a nut on the top, feed the filament through, uh, and then that nut there will allow the whole thing to move around quite nicely without bending your wire or your filament in too tightly or causing any problems with the filament as it's been fed or and scratching it. The last thing we'll do is we'll just show you how to feed the filament through which is fairly straightforward. I like to just straighten the filament up a little bit and you can see there that the filament quite nicely. Sometimes you need to just give it a little bit of encouragement to go through the bottom and there we go, we're through. Now you can sometimes put that arrangement it straight in, clip that off the bottom, drop that straight in. Oh and the last thing is your nut will be um, uh, uh, coming up from inside the, the, uh, the actual top and what we've done is made sure the gap there is absolute minimum. And that's your new filament feeder.